Andrew Hi, I'm Rob Wooden. We're venue support workers for Isis Primary Care. Here today to present the VRGF Randomness and EGM Operations Session. Player information display. What is it and how does it work? Each EGM in Victoria has an information button and depending on the make and the model, it can usually be found in the button seat or on the monitor as part of the display. Uh, when someone presses the information button, it brings up a main screen. It's a menu to other sections of the information. Uh, generally, there's reserve, game information, tracking session, the game rules, and the pay table. And of course, again, depending on the model of the machine, they can look quite different, as uh, these two slides indicate. Usually the reserve on the machine is set at three minutes, however most venues have a hard cardboard based reserve sign which will say ten minutes or at staff discretion. Uh, generally the information about the game will give the, the name of the game, it will indicate whether it's linked to a jackpot or not. The theoretical return to player of the game, if it is linked to a jackpot it will show the jackpot contributions. The theoretical number of individual games played per win, which can range from 4 to 100. It will also say the minimum bet, the maximum bet available, which is $5 in Victoria, and the chances of winning the top five combinations provided, uh, and the chances of winning the bottom five combinations. A couple of really interesting things to show patrons about this screen are the RTP return to player, which staff need to know how to explain that it's right across a venue, across all machines. And the other is that expected number of individual games played per win, remembering that a win to any player is any return after they push the button. Because once you push the button, you've done your dough until something comes back, and that's always considered a win. Even if you bet 20 credits and only two comes back, that's a win. Another feature in the machines is double up. Uh, double Up is the only part of the game that has no contribution to jackpot, so it's a true Double Up. Obviously they can choose red or black and the stake will be doubled if they choose correctly, or they can choose a suit, uh, as in the card suits, hearts, diamonds, clubs and spades, and a correct selection will multiply by three. Uh, in Victoria, you can only Double Up a maximum of five times, or if the win will, uh, the potential win will result in less than $10,000 win. So if you had $6,000 on a machine, it will not let you double up because the, the win could potentially be greater than $10,000. Again, there is that one important thing that Belinda mentioned, that it is the only fair bet where there is no house deduction. So it's a 50-50 chance. Line sets can be quite difficult for some patrons to follow um, and... This is an example of a 50 line game, uh, quite usual for the query to be why didn't I win on that line and this is available for staff and patrons to trace the configuration. Usually they are uh, colour based and they can find them that way to see whether they should have one or not query. You can well imagine that staff trying to explain this to a patron will have a lot of difficulties themselves. It is very, very complex. And there are 100 lines line machines too that make it even worse. A tracking session currently available on all machines. Um, it very easily started by pushing the start tracking session. Uh, you can stop them. It's designed so the patron can go back periodically and check their spend or time uh, for a session. If there is no credit on the machine for one minute on the clock, the session will automatically end, so it's available for the next player. They can see their cash in, how many credits they've played, what their win has been, uh, session win or loss. The loss is shown in brackets rather than a minus sign, simply because it's easy to see on the monitor, and if they've cashed out uh, at any stage, what they've cashed out as well. Uh, this is completely voluntary for uh, players, should they choose to use it. We are finding there's a tendency for younger men in some venues to be using this as a measure of turnover. For example, two friends will go in, put $100 into a machine, track their session, right at the end when they both lost their 100 they see which one's had the biggest throughput. Often they have a side wager on that too, naturally. 
Uh, this is the information that was on the previous slide and it's just easier to see. Uh, this is an example where any jackpot wins are included in the credit meter. Uh, not all manufacturers use the same formula. There are other ones where the, there are small asterisks next to the credits available and that will indicate they've won a jackpot but it's not included in this meter. Pre-commitment, uh, a voluntary pre-commitment is now available on some models uh, as they're rolled out by different manufacturers that usually sits with the tracking session uh, where players can pre-set the amount of time they want to play or the amount of money they want to spend. The main difference between the voluntary pre-commitment screens and tracking session is that they can preset their limit rather than keep observing until they reach it. And also with the um, tracking session screens, it's up to the individual to go back periodically and check if they've preset a time or money limit, then there's a pop-up screen that'll come up, give them all the same information that they have on a tracking session with the option to collect or continue. It is voluntary pre-commitment, so it's entirely up to the player whether they want to continue with or without another preset. Uh, when they make their selection, uh, it's important for staff to give confidence to the player their selection's been recorded. The screen stays for a minimum 15 seconds so that the player can read the information on the screen. It doesn't automatically vanish, and sometimes that can, 15 seconds can feel like a long time because it equals six spins. One of the important things about pre-commitment is it gets p patrons to control themselves rather than say, saying to a staff member, it's, tell me where it's 3.10, I've got to go and pick up the kids. The staff member can say, you can do that on your machine, it will tell you. Same with the spend. I, I'm only going to spend 200 today. If I come back, tell me no. Staff can't tell you no. But you can control it yourself and they'll show you how to do that. It avoids creating uncomfortable situations for staff, especially with regular patrons. It lets them mind themselves. Jackpots are an interesting tool used by the industry. <clears throat> They're great fun to win, obviously, but there are different sorts of jackpots. There's a progressive jackpot where the prize grows incrementally with every new bet placed, a non-progressive which has a fixed dollar prize, a deterministic jackpot which has a payoff mechanism whereby the EGM will pay off at some interval of bets, not at a dollar interval and not at a, a time interval, just the number of bets that have been placed. So there are varied jackpots. Non-deterministic jackpots can pay off at any time, as calculated at random with each bet. Um, so people who think they can predict when a jackpot's going to go are wrong. <laughs> uh, readily, pat patrons have considered that the jackpots have been a prize from the venue. And when there were operators, they quite readily considered that they were a prize from TATS or TABCORP. And uh, it, there's very little understanding that each spin is contributing to the jackpot and therefore they're paying for them themselves. It, it's a great myth in venues that they've received a cash prize from the venue. And it's something that staff do have a little trouble explaining if they don't use the PID screen that shows jackpot contributions. So, how does all this translate to an electronic gaming machine? We get into the nitty gritty now of random number generators. Uh, there's only two real, true random number generators, that's atmospheric sound or radioactive emissions. I don't think we're going to have a piece of uranium in every EGM with a Geiger counter, and I don't think we're going to position them outside the stratosphere. So we use computers to provide what's called a pseudo-random number generator. In Victoria, it continuously and constantly generates a random number. Whether the machine is being pushed, used, or whatever, it continually spins a random number at the rate of approximately a million a second. Your computer operates in megahertz, and guess what? This is a computer. It does the same thing. Pressing the play button actually selects the number. It stops the machine at that point. Unlike the old days where you pulled the one-arm bandit, it would start the spin. With, with the EGNs, when you push the button, you actually stop the process, grab the number, it goes off and checks a payout table, and then represents the payout table result on the symbols in front of you. Uh, the exact time it's pushed determines that random result, and as I said, it's a million a second. 
So if someone was sitting in a machine that you were sitting at an hour ago and they got a jackpot, it would be most unlikely that if you had stayed there, you would have got the jackpot because you would have to have pushed at that millionth of a second. It has, we have the highest quality random number generators. We're bound by the Australian New Zealand standards for EGMs. They run through some seven statistical processes to ensure the random nature. No machine has the same sequence of random numbers because they all start off with a different random number seed. And that's part of the, the excellent quality of randomness we have in Victoria. When uh, EGMs are turned off and staff are actually discouraged from turning machines off unless there is a significant fault, when they start back up again, it always says a power up for about a minute to a minute and a half. And what the machine's actually doing is checking that all the hardware components are still operating correctly. It goes back to the last known random number. It verifies it and then starts the process again. And then the machine's operation is play to maintain fairness. One of the good things about that is that even a tech can't go back and find out what the next random number to be generated is. Random numbers are often difficult to explain, but if you use the example of uh, 10 balls in a barrel, numbered 0 to 9, and you just pluck one out and put it back, and then pluck another one out and put it back, and you only had 10, 10 draws, you'd find an uneven distribution. Note that first graph on, on, on the top there. The second one starts to approach a smoother graph by selecting 10,000 of those numbers, putting them back each time and selecting another one. And you don't actually get a smooth, uh, trans a smooth progression until you get to a million draws. When you've had a million draws, you start levelling out to what you would expect. The reason we do this on this particular session is to say that the longer you play, the more you approach the expected return to player. To be assured of getting at least 87% back for your dollar, you would have to sit at every machine in one venue, 20 hours a day, 365 days a year, play them all. Then you would be assured of losing a minimum of 13%. It's not a good thought. Another area not commonly understood by patrons is the real stop positions, and this is what gives the house its advantage. They would assume playing a machine that each reel has the same number of symbols where they don't. Um, the example of this one, it, it's a very basic game, it only has 25 symbols. Um, if you look at the, the top line where the nines are, on reel one there's one symbol, on reel two there's two, on reel three there's seven, on reel four there's one, and on reel five there's five, giving a total of 18. The combinations are actually 140, but the perceived combinations are 604. Uh, where we get to the higher paying table on this machine, I, as in the lower line, the ISIS, there's actually only one symbol per line, giving a combination of five. So there's one combination with perceived combination of one. Patrons uh, don't appreciate that there can be over 130 symbols per reel because they're actually not mechanical, they're electronically displayed, and it's only displayed once that random number's been selected and translated through the pay table. There are some interesting terms used in the way these reels are stacked. For example, if there's, in the first case, nines, seven nines, that's called puffing. If there's uh, one nine, for example, reels one and reel four, that's called starving. And there's a term called dithering, which doesn't apply to old people really, it applies to this machine where they can swap the array of, of uh, occurrences across reels at random. We don't have dithering in Victoria, it's not allowed, but we do certainly have puffing and starving, because that's part of the house edge. And thank you very much. Thanks for your attention, hope you got something out of it.